The difference between food allergies and food intolerances is confusing. Over the years, I've had multiple families tell me things such as, my child has a lactose or gluten allergy, or my child has a dairy or wheat intolerance. And I've seen families make dietary changes and modifications based on these statements that may or may not appropriately address the real problem. So what is the difference between an allergy and intolerance? And why does it matter? A true allergy is a reaction that involves the body's immune system. When it comes to food allergies, the reaction occurs in response to a protein. Because the immune system is involved, the body's reaction is to fight the allergen like it's an invader, and this can quickly lead to life-threatening symptoms. A food intolerance is not life-threatening and does not mount an immune response. Often, intolerances are a result of incomplete digestion or absorption of something that's not a protein. For example, lactose. Lactose is the sugar of milk. Since lactose is a sugar, it does not cause an allergy. Certainly, it can cause uncomfortable symptoms if someone is intolerant, but lactose intolerance is a result of poor digestion of milk sugar. Frequently, I've seen patients who've eliminated dairy foods from their diet because of symptoms related to lactose intolerance. This often reflects a misunderstanding of lactose intolerance or a lack of information about how to avoid lactose. Not all dairy products contain lactose. Therefore, complete dairy elimination is not necessary for people with lactose intolerance. Why does that matter? Because dairy, specifically the calcium and protein found in dairy foods, is an essential part of a balanced diet for children and teenagers. Meeting the body's demands for calcium during the growing years is a challenge even for people without lactose intolerance. Some of my clients are actually dairy allergic. A true dairy allergy is a reaction to the protein from milk. Milk protein is found in all dairy products. In the case of a true dairy allergy, my clients do need to avoid all forms of dairy and look at alternate ways to meet the protein and calcium needs of their growing children. While using plant-based milk substitutes can help, these milks do not offer the same quality of calcium absorption as dairy-based products. And for these children, I take special care and effort to assist families in planning a diet that will meet the demands of growth and development. What about gluten? That's confusing too. Gluten is a protein, and people with celiac disease cannot tolerate gluten. Yet I sometimes have patients come in for a consult and insist that they couldn't possibly be wheat intolerant since they tested negative for celiac disease. As it turns out, another carbohydrate, fructan, that is found in wheat can cause similar symptoms as lactose intolerance for certain people. Does that mean people who are fructan intolerant are allergic or intolerant to gluten? Actually, no. Many people with fructan intolerance can have small amounts of wheat and they do fine with rye and barley products. But when they eat too much fructan at any given time, they may suffer from GI symptoms such as gas, bloating, and changes in stools. Often people who are sensitive to fructan find they have other sensitivities to carbohydrates as well. These carbohydrates that cause digestive issues are known as FODMAPs, and lactose intolerance and fructan intolerance are both types of FODMAP sensitivity associated with IBS or IBS-like symptoms. It's very common for people with food intolerance to have variable symptoms, making it difficult to identify the problem. Sometimes you might seem to do fine with some cheese, and another time seem to be sick from a single scoop of ice cream. Or perhaps it seems like you tolerate a sandwich, but a big bowl of spaghetti and meatballs pushes you over the limit. Because food intolerances generally are not immediate reactions and are usually dependent upon the dose of the ingested food, it can be tricky to isolate and identify the cause. If you've tested negative for food allergies but continue to have unpleasant GI reactions associated with food, you may want to consider a low FODMAPs diet. The low FODMAPs diet will help you get in control of your symptoms and learn to identify the problematic foods. If you want to give the low FODMAPs diet a try, I've put together lots of resources on the Feed to Succeed website, including a free book of great, easy to make low FODMAP recipes to get you started with the diet. You can find the download link in the description for this video. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like so that other parents can find it too. 
or if you still have other questions about food intolerances or the low FODMAPs diet, leave us a comment or check out the other videos on your screen now.